For some reason, in the past few days, there has been a lot of talk about the association between alcohol and cancer. It's not that it's not important, it's just why now? For some reason, these days, I am very suspicious, more suspicious than normal. And I usually ask not whether or not it's in the news or whether it's important, but sadly, why now? And that's really been the question. And you will see right here that actually, just in the past few days, this is a tweet by Dr. Vivek Murthy. He's the U.S. Surgeon General, and he's putting out an advisory on the causal link between alcohol consumption and increased cancer risk. You can see here, this is on the 3rd of January, 2025. And so it is important. It's not that it's not a relevant issue. Again, why now? And then you got it all over the news internationally. So here is the BBC that was again talking about the US top doctor calling for cancer warnings on alcohol. And this was the 3rd of January, 2025. And as it was, America's top doctors called for risk warnings on alcoholic beverages. This is an important point, but again, why now? Is this about muddying the waters? You can see that there is some mud in one of the glasses. What information is coming up soon that needs this to come out now? And you will understand if you've been following me why I would have said that. So before I go into this in a little bit more detail, uh, just reminding you that if you want to join us in this journey with regards to uh, preparing against disease X, it's still number one in Amazon in viral diseases. Are you prepared? You can get an excerpt here if you sign up for our newsletter, or you can get it here from Amazon and see some of the testimonials. Join us in this journey as we continue to bring you up-to-date information on what's going on. Additionally, coming up in a little bit over a week, Autoimmunity 101, this is where I've been focusing my attention for a number of years in COVID, and I realize a lot of people don't quite understand it. And so therefore, I'm not only going to be talking about COVID in this, but just generally autoimmunity, the basics of it, and why I anticipate that this is going to be a big issue in the years to come. So let's get back to this issue about the Surgeon General raising this about alcohol and cancer. And so the first thing that I did is that I thought about, okay, when last have they been talking about this? And is it just that this is a refresher as to what was going on? And so when I took a look, here we have, this is from the CDC, and it's talking about three weird things about acetaldehyde, which I'll cover in a short while. This was from April of 2nd, 2018. And it was talking about the fact that this metabolite from alcohol can cause cancer. And it's talking about the link between alcohol and cancer that may surprise you. And it's talking about the different cancers that you can get. So this is not new news. This is actually old news. And it appeared when it came out that this was something that was just being realized. No, they've known it for some time and they're reminding people about this link. But again, I ask, why now? And so when I look at it, it's that very often, if my instincts are right, I suspect that within the next month or so, there's going to be some breaking news about a massive rise in cancer broadly across the population. And so when you've read this information, you will naturally assume, oh yes, it's all these people smoking and drinking that has caused this problem you need to read between the lines. Very often, the water is muddied. And this is quite deliberate because they want you to focus on stuff that is true, but not the whole truth. That's the point of muddying the waters because suddenly you're just not sure. Well, yeah, cancer has been going up for some time. You know, what about this alcohol liver disease? Is there something that's going on? 
part of the issue, and this is what I have been doing the challenge on, is that I have been talking about how it is that you have a connection between what has been happening in the pandemic and some of the unusual patterns that we are seeing across the board, including liver disease. So when I looked at it, and I did a presentation on this in the past, you can see here that you have a combination of factors that can lead to liver damage. Certainly, there is alcohol liver disease. Certainly, there is a fatty liver. But down here is another big piece of the puzzle. It's autoimmune hepatitis. And in truth, this can come from a number of spike protein sources not just one. And so the point about that is that when you think about what is going on, you have to realize that there are a number of factors that are being sidelined, swept under the carpet, because they are relevant to what is going on and what is likely to happen next. So what I've done is I've done I've previously done a whole presentation on the Liver Disease Association and critically what you can do if for whatever reason you have a history of drinking, you're still drinking, how can you protect this valuable organ? And here we have, this is just some of the slides from that presentation, looking at the liver generally, just so that you have a basic understanding. This is where it sits in your, um, in your uh, upper abdomen. Um, and this is what it does. It does a number of critical things. It um, metabolizes carbohydrates. This is glucose and fructose, stores vitamins, has an important immune function, protein metabolism, bile acid for absorbing fats, detoxification, drug and alcohol. This is a big part of what causes the, the damage. So it's a very important organ. And what I was highlighting is that this has been damaged throughout the pandemic because of spike protein related um, issues. And I was just going through in the presentation some of the things that the liver does so that you have an overview of it. Um, liver metabolism, how it metabolizes stuff, things that are good or bad for the liver. All of these things are already covered in that course. If you want to learn more about it, then certainly just uh, take a look in the link below and it will help you to understand a little bit more about what is going on. But critically, when it comes to the liver, is that you think need to know what can you do about it. I'll come to that in a little bit. But let's get back to uh, what was said here. Um, when we look at the BBC report here, as they said, they were highlighting um, that the fact is that a majority of Americans are unaware of this risk and it leads to about 100,000 cases of cancer and 20,000 deaths annually in the US. So this is still very, very important. And it's not something that we should downplay, but as I said, there are some very important factors that you need to consider. Here are the details that they have put forward from the US Surgeon General's advisory, alcohol and cancer risk. And I'll just show you some of the images here. And the first thing is that they have attributed over 70, 740,000 cancer cases worldwide linked to alcohol. Um, and you can see here all these cases from less than two, 185,000, going up to more than six, 192,000. So this is quite significant impacts. And as I, I highlighted before, the, the reason I did the liver presentation was because I was making people aware that the capacity of their liver after the pandemic is not the same as it was before. Really important point. So if you used to be able to drink, you know, six pints of beer and be fine, after the pandemic, you try and do it and you'll find you'll struggle with four. And this is just purely down to the amount of people who have had spike protein damage, probably autoimmune, and therefore they are unable to tolerate the same levels of stuff in terms of their liver. Because what will happen is that if you don't address it, you will find that the liver will get damaged much more quickly. Looking back at the, um, the document again, 
Less than half of Americans are aware that alcohol consumption increases cancer risk. And you can see here, they know about it for radiation, 98, 91%. 89% know about the link with tobacco, asbestos, 81%. But obesity, only 53%, and alcohol, only 45%. And what they're pushing for the industry to do, similar to what has occurred with tobacco, is that these risks have to be put on the bottle. That's a good thing. It's not that this is a bad thing. It's a good thing. However, the timing is really, really important. And I would have to be sure that not in the next month or so, I don't see another big story coming out about a surge in cancer cases or something like that, because then people would automatically assume this was the cause when there are important elephants to consider. Let's get back here. In terms of the common cancers that are associated with alcohol, you have the mouth, oral cavity. As you're drinking the alcohol, it can do damage. Throat, of course, when you're swallowing it. The voice box, some of it may go down into the voice, into the larynx and damage it. Esophagus, it has to pass through the esophagus to get to the stomach. So you can see that all of the upper airway or the upper um, oral cavity is damaged by alcohol and there's an increased risk of cancer. Breast cancer, this is something that's related to the liver and the production of hormones. Definitely liver cancer and definitely colon cancer. And so all of these cancers are at much higher risk in relation to alcohol. And I think it's only right that the industry has to accept the responsibility with regards to this. So this is very, very important. And they, I, again, they highlighted a number of ways that alcohol can cause cancer. Uh, this here is very important in that what happens with alcohol, it is first broken down into a metabolite acetaldehyde, and this here then is metabolized to another non-toxic metabolite. But it's limited by an enzyme. And if that enzyme is damaged, or if it's not working as well, what will then happen is you have an accumulation of this, and this can then do damage. It is toxic to DNA. And it's one of the reasons that they think that alcohol can lead to cancer. As well, as they said, with reactive oxygen species, alcohol can do that as well. This was very interesting. Mechanism D leads to greater absorption of carcinogens. So in, in essence, people who drink and smoke seem to have a higher risk of the impact of the carcinogens, certainly in the oral, cap, in the oral cavity. So these are all really important points. And it is important for people to understand this alcohol risk because many people are not aware or they just, how do I say this? People are oftentimes presuming that alcohol is good for you. Now, let me just be clear on that. It has been shown that moderate intake of alcohol, certainly alcohol, say red wine and so on, can be protective against certain, um, certain conditions. However, you must realize that alcohol in its pure and simple form is not anything that the body uses. It always tries to detoxify it. And so the mechanism that the body uses to detoxify it, if it becomes overwhelmed, what it then means is that in theory, anything else that needs to be detoxified is not easily accessible. And so therefore it puts your body at risk. So it's not that alcohol is necessarily dangerous to everyone, but I think that it is important for everybody to consider their own personal risk and the fact that across the population, this risk has largely increased. So this was part of the reason why I'd put together this uh, liver um, course, because I anticipated a horrendous rise in liver disease over the next few years. And in it, we'd go through the principles of the liver, insulin resistance, alcohol damage to the liver, critically autoimmune liver damage, and the potential liver protection strategies. This is really important because in this, I've put down what I think are strategies that people who are drinking or have been drinking 
should be doing to try and protect that liver. It's really such an important organ. And most critically, it does regenerate. So if you have been damaging it and you stop, very often it will regenerate and get back to normal. So there is a chance if it hasn't yet become cirrhotic, that means where it's permanent fibrotic damage to the liver, that it can regenerate itself. So it comes down to the fact that yes, alcohol is critical in terms of cancer risk, but is this an attempt to muddy the waters? And so now you have to become very savvy at looking in the next few weeks to a month, look out to make sure that there are no big news stories that come out stating that, wow, cancer cases have risen. The natural assumption will be for people to say, oh, they were just talking about the link between alcohol and cancer. It's not that it's not real, but the impression that people will have is that's the reason for the rising cancer cases. If that's what you think, remember, there is an elephant in the room and that elephant, nobody wants to acknowledge. And if you don't acknowledge it, or if you don't keep on pressing those buttons, nobody will do anything about it, but it will not go away. And so my anticipation is that in the next few months, we're going to see results coming out that are showing what I've always anticipated, that we're going to see a massive rise in the risk of cancer across the population, it will be passed off as many other things. But very rarely will they acknowledge that elephant in the room. So final point for you, remember, join us in this journey with regards to disease X. The link is in the description. And if you want to learn more about autoimmunity, the body's mysterious attack on itself and how it's related to COVID, please again join us in this process. Lots more education to do over the next year. I'll try and keep up with all the news and help you to understand exactly what is happening. Have a good evening.